Hi everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Jesse. I am one of the developers at Sportmonks and today I am really happy to finally be able to show you the first glimpses of the new API that we have been working very hard on in the past couple of months. So currently we have reached a stage in the development of the new API where we are more than happy to have a specific set of customers, test the new data features, functionalities and endpoints that come with the new API. So we are going into a sort of beta phase, so to say, to uh, have these customers deliver us valuable feedback, which helps us to make further improvements to the final product. Also, we are trying to provide additional guidance to customers in the form of tutorial videos, just like this one. So if you like these type of videos or found that they helped you out in some way, or if you have any additional feedback, we'd be really happy to know. All right, enough with the chit chat. Let's get right into it. The new version of the API. So the first thing I would recommend you to read through is the so-called what's new page on our documentation. And this page contains information about all of the new features that come with our new API uh, endpoints updated syntax and also changes in our data model. So for you to have a quick understanding of everything that has changed, I would recommend you to read through this page. So for this video, we have decided to sort of rebuild uh, an uh, example API call on the fixtures by date range endpoint. Um, that is how it's currently set up for API version two. And we are going to sort of translate that into a call uh, for API version three, which is the new version. So you will be getting a overview of how the current uh, includes uh, filters, stuff like that works in API version two. And how does this translate to API version three? As you can see on your screen right now, I have an example. Uh, of our current API calling the fixture by date range endpoint. And we are going to be uh, passing the leaks filter and we are going to request the champions league only. So that has league ID two. And we are going to use some pretty frequently used, pretty basic uh, includes. So in this case, the lineup, the events and the local team and the visitor team. And we're going to be passing a date range of one week. So currently looking at the response for API version two, uh, this will probably look very familiar to you as this is um, yeah, how our API works at the moment. And you've already probably used this data. So starting off, we have some basic information about relations that are available on the, on the fixture. We have uh, a weather report. Uh, when we scroll even further down, we have information about scores of the game. We have information about the status of the game. And also we can see that uh, we, the relations that we requested are available. So the local team, visitor team and lineup. So yeah, this looks very familiar to you most probably. And for the sake of this video, we're not going to go in depth into this. We are now going to show you the uh, translation of this request through version three of the API. And I'm gonna highlight the most important changes. Looking at API three, the first differences I would like to point out to you is the change in URL structure. Uh, of course, the base URL changes, but the most important changes are in the parameters for the version and the parameter for the sport that you are requesting. Starting off with the version, um, we have now implemented versioning into our API or at least support for versioning because currently we're working on version three, of course. Uh, but we have uh, implemented support for versioning. So in the, in the future, if we decide to change some existing endpoints, for example, we can just easily uh, change those uh, endpoints for a new version only. So for example, for version 3.1, and we want to give you as a customer the opportunity to either choose for, uh, to keep using the existing version or to implement the, the new version uh, in your application. So that's why we have implemented versioning and that's why you have to uh, pass the version as well. 
Second to that is that we now offer the possibility to pass a so-called domain into the URL. And a domain either consists of information that is sport specific or information that is not sport specific. So for example, sport specific would mean that you pass the parameter football, for example, or cricket or formula one. And what this tells our API is that you are trying to request data for that specific sport only. So football slash fixtures would, you know, return you all the results of football matches and cricket slash fixtures would return you all the results for cricket matches. Now, currently for API version three, we have only implemented football and we are focusing on that as well. But in the future, we are adding the other sports into the same data model and the same API structure. So you can uh, easily implement the sports as well, since their structure and responses is about the same. Now, if you want any information about all the domains that we have available, then I would like to redirect you to our documentation pages as we have a more detailed explanation about the available domains over there. When we want to use filters in API 3, we do this by uh, passing the filters parameter. And it works a little bit different than in API 2 because in API 2, a filter was a parameter on its own. And after the uh, parameter, for example, leaks, you would pass the ID of the leak that you want to filter on. But in this case, the word filters is actually our parameter and we can pass the filters that we want to apply to our request by typing the name of the filter and then the arguments of that filter, we can pass it after a column. So in the case of filtering for a leak, the Champions League, we can say filters and then leaks column two. This will filter all of the fixtures that belong to the Champions League. So as you can see on your screen, I have already listed the includes that we are going to request in my Postman. And this is also where you might first notice the changes in our underlying data model for API 3 because some of the includes that I have listed here, for example, weather report uh, was by default included in the data in API version two, for example, when requesting a fixture. And then the other includes like periods and participants are totally new and lineups and events, they will probably uh, be very familiar to you as they were the same and as in version two. So don't be afraid, I'm going to walk you through these changes. And also, of course, we have a, a, a page in the docs dedicated to these changes and how to translate your includes and your application from API version two to API version three. So let's get right into it. Starting off with the weather report, like I said already in API version two, this was returned by default in the response, but for API three, we have made it optional and it is now a relation that you can include just like other relations. And the data itself hasn't changed much other than some changes in structure. And of course the relations that are now related to this weather report, for example, the fixture ID and the venue ID. Next up is the periods include, and this marks a pretty big change compared to API version two, as this include wasn't available back there. And periods pretty much hold information about halves for, in this case, a football fixture. And as you can see, we have information about the scores here and also timestamps, which mark when a half has started and when a half has ended and the ticking field on the period marks whether the period is in play or not. And if the period is in play, then the minutes and seconds attributes will be filled by the minute that the match is currently in and the second that the match is currently in. Also something you might notice is that the periods hold a type ID and types is something new that we have introduced for API 3 together with states. And we have 
introduce them to ensure data quality and consistency for specific fields. And in this case, uh, it tells you what kind of period is related to the period that we, you are requesting. So they are related to a type. In this case, when we request the type on period by typing periods.type, so you get the nested include, you can see that the type is in the first case, a type of first half. And in the second case, you can see that it is of type second half. Types are something we have introduced globally to the API, and we have more information about them available on our documentation. And we also have an endpoint available where you can list all of the types that we use in the API. When we scroll further down, we can now see that the participants include is returned. And participants is pretty much the replacement for local team and visitor team, which is the way you would request them in API 2. And as you can see, this holds, in this case, the information for the teams that have played in the match. But participants is more of a global setup, which would fit into the different sports that we are planning to introduce to the API. So also, for example, cricket teams or Formula One drivers would be participants. So in this case, for football, a participant is a team. And we can also see that in a response. When we go from top to bottom, we can see that first the IDs of relations are returned. And after that comes some information about the team, for example, the gender, whether it's a male team or a female team. We can see the name and the shortcode of the team, but also the image path, which contains the logo, for example. And when we look further down, we can see that the meta tag holds uh, the location for the team. So this marks whether the team is playing home or an away match. Of course, we also requested lineups. And when we scroll further down, we can see that the lineups for both teams are included in the response. Now, first of all, this holds some IDs to relations on the lineup. So for example, the fixture ID, the player ID, the team ID, and also new is that we now have IDs for positions. So you can also request the position entity on the lineup by requesting the nested include lineups.position. You can see that the lineup entity also holds a type ID, and you can request that by using the uh, nested include lineups.type. And in this case, type refers to, or actually marks if a player is on the starting 11, or if a player is on the bench. So it's another use of types in our API. And in this case, it helps you to differentiate between players that start and players that are benched at the start of the match. Another include we requested is the events include. Now starting from top to bottom, we can again see that the IDs of relations are the first thing that are included. And important things to note here are the period ID so the period ID is a way to associate an event with a, in football matches, of course, halves. So we, I already showed you how periods work in the periods include, and events are associated with them by using the ID of the certain period. And again, we can also see that events also hold a type ID. And in this case, this can be either a substitution, it can be a goal, or it can be a card, for example. Now, the latest include I would like to show you is the so-called state include. And this actually marks information about the state of the fixture. So this can either be full time or not started or in play first half, for example. 
And again, this is something new we introduced and more information we have available on our documentation pages. And we also have a separate endpoint for this. So you can actually request all of the states that are available for a certain sport. So I hope this video gave you a nice high level overview of how our new API is structured. And of course, also the responses that you can expect. So to follow up on this, I would really recommend you to read through our docs as we have more information about how the new API works over there. And we will release uh, more videos similar to this one in the upcoming future. So if you have any feedback or if you have anything that we can improve on, please let us know. Now, if you need any additional help or if things are unclear to you, you can, of course, always reach out to us via support at sportmonks.com. For now, I would really want to thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.